Now, they're one of Wales' most cherished tr creatures, but as an endangered species, their future has long been precarious. Now, though, crucial work to protect a population of red squirrels in Ceredigion is expanding. Conservationists say that numbers in the area have dropped so dramatically that the survival of the species there is in jeopardy. Our West Wales reporter, Lewis Rees-Jones, has been taking a look at the plans. It's a beautiful day to be up here in the Toey Forest near Pontree Van Deeguide and I'm joined by Josie Bridges, Conservation Officer at the Wildlife Trust of South and West Wales. Thanks for your time. Could I start by asking you then, what are you doing to help the red squirrel population in mid and west Wales? Yeah, so red squirrels, unfortunately, have not had the best time of it recently. Um, the, when the grey squirrel was um, introduced in the late 1800s, um, the, the red squirrel population really suffered. So at, at this point in time, it looks like there's about 2.8 million grey squirrels in the UK um, and only about 100,000 red squirrels. And here in mid Wales, we only have about 100 red squirrels, unfortunately, surviving in this big, vast forest. And in the last couple of years, they've suffered even more because of the really warm weather we've been having, we've been experiencing all over the UK. It makes them struggle to find food, struggle to find water, and most importantly, struggle to raise their kits. And so why are you expanding that focal site then? Well, so that's the good news story of this, really. Um, for many years, we've had a, a focal zone here in this area where we really um, studied the red squirrels quite intensively. And surrounding that, we had a buffer area where we monitored grey squirrel incursion. Now, fortunately, we've had very little grey squirrel incursion into the focal zone in recent years. So we've managed to expand that and by doing that it means there's more space for red squirrels to thrive, more space for, for red squirrels to find food and, and raise their kits. And red squirrel, unfortunately, they do like to hide and they, it's hard to spot them. So what sort of kit and equipment are you using to monitor them? Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there. Red squirrels and all of our mammal species are really tricky to find. So we use a lot of volunteers to help us spread our wet net wider. And the most important bit of kit we use is, is our little camera traps here. So these are motion activated. Whatever animal um, comes past in the forest um, will um, set this off and we get a nice 30 second clip, even if it's at night. It means all of our staff don't have to come out um, in the middle of the night to track animals. For the reds to thrive, of course, the grey squirrel population has to be taken under consideration. And Phil Harris, that is your job, of course, as a uh, grey squirrel control officer. So what sort of risks does the grey pose on the red squirrel? Uh, the biggest risk that you've got is, is the, uh, obviously, the greys carry this disease, which is called the parapox, plus the fact that the, uh, the greys can eat their food sources a lot earlier. Uh, they eat the hazelnuts and, and various other forest fruits uh, before they even ripen. The other issues is that it's down to the breeding side of it where a red will only breed possibly once, twice if, the, if everything is perfect. Where you'll have a, a greys will actually breed two if not three times. Yeah. So obviously yeah, we, we got a, we've got a major task on our hands really to, to preserve the reds that are already in this area because uh, they are declining. Well, there's a lot of work still to do, isn't there? So thanks ever so much for your time. So there you have it. The red squirrels population, it is very low, but there is still hope that we'll be able to help.